Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Uh, they're, they're a good team. They're, uh, they resemble more of the teams that, that I'm accustomed to playing at, at Oregon uh, in terms of the, the good teams that, that uh, Dana Altman has had there since I've been in the Pac-12. And, uh, you know, they, they play with a, a good level of aggression. They have great athletes. They, uh, you know, they have a good inside presence, one of the best inside players in our league. They have a uh, great perimeter shooting. So they, uh, they check a lot of boxes. They're a very good basketball team. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is with that, you know, that's that I don't see that dramatically changing between now and the end of the season. Uh, you know, I think that's a byproduct of, uh, you know, how we need to play in the lineups that, you know, that we're putting on the floor. It's just, uh, you know, we need to make up for, uh, you know, not having uh, the size that some of the other programs have in our conference with, uh, with our speed and our quickness. So what we give up in some areas, we, we try and gain in others. I just think continuing to, I would say, if you're asking me that right now, probably the continued development of the bench. Um, and, you know, when I say that, I think, uh, you know, I liked what I saw from Bryant and his efforts and, and, and you know, getting Sean Phillips going again. Um, you know, Kamari Lands is, is someone that I think could be very important for us the second half of the season. I think there's, you haven't seen anything like what I've seen from him, you know, in the summer and leading into the season, and it hasn't exactly happened for him yet. But I think there's still time, and you know. So I, I if you're asking me, I would say that, and just the continued uh, growth uh, amongst the core players, just continuing to learn, you know, playing together, building that chemistry, the cohesiveness that that you're starting to see at times. The guys are really gelling on the floor, offensively in particular, trusting each other, sharing the ball. So that. And over the last month has from the Northwestern game before Christmas to now in that one area is a, the growth has been significant and I think it still could get better. How about how Jose has performed? Um, it seems like in the last handful of games, he went through that little slump there, but now he's figured it out. He's working well with his team. He's been an en energy guy. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he knows how to play. He's extremely high IQ guy. Uh, understands his game, really has a uh, great understanding of who he is as a player and what he brings. So uh, he, he's mature, he's older, so it's uh, it, it's great for, for our team. And he's different. He's uh, he's unique uh, in ways that we could, you know, utilize his skill set, you know, on offense to help us score the basketball. You know, he's the one, I mean, we don't throw it inside very often, and that's just you know, how our, our roster is built. Like, we threw it in a lot more last year. and. I think Sean's injury had something to do with that, um, and hopefully we could see him grow and develop. But Jose gives us the opportunity at his position to strategically, you'll get him the ball in high percentage areas to get a shot, you know, in the lane. You talk about Sean and, and his injury, and earlier in the season you talked about him kind of being coming back on a minutes restriction. Is he still working through that minutes restriction? Is it something where he just has to earn his minutes back? Or, or? Yeah, I mean, I think Sean is just it's gonna. You know, it's going to depend game to game. I think this is a game that you know, sh you know, we need Sean. You know, you're playing a guy like Dante, as big as he is, uh, you know, he's uh, you know he's our most physical presence we have on the roster, and so uh, you know, really need him to to step up in this game certainly. And, and uh, there's no extreme pressure on Sean. Like it's you know, he's our youngest player. I think he's going to get better and better. I think it's going to be game to game with how things go. Is, uh, is does he avoid foul trouble and and, uh, and other things that would prevent him from getting more minutes? So it's just uh, it'll it'll kind of be game to game with him. To be sitting in a tie for first about a third of the way through conference play, and to feel like you largely played winning games in those two losses, even is that enough of a sample size for you to feel good and believe that you guys can be there? At the end? Just I think where everyone is in the standings, you can never be comfortable. So if you if you're uh, uh, if you say to yourself, "Oh, we're in good shape right now," then then look out. So I always kind of always have my guard up uh, as we go through the season. Want to, uh, but you have to feel okay. You know, I've won two road games, true road games, uh, playing some good teams. The, the mountains are good this year. 
you know, the LA's here is never easy. So we played some challenging games and, and been able to, you know, to stay right now at the moment at the top of the standing. So we just got to keep fighting and keep battling to stay there. We talked before about keeping your composure and obviously the USC game, you guys did a phenomenal job of that. I think the guys can look back on that and say, gosh, look how good we can be if we do just focus on the task at hand. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I think they, we showed uh, quite a bit more uh, maturity and discipline in that game, and just focused on playing basketball and executing. And uh, you know, it was it was a it was a beautiful thing to watch at times. Uh, you know, just seeing the crowd like that, seeing the student section like that, just getting that energy, feeding off it. The way we finished the first half with the explosive plays that we made, and uh, just seeing the crowd get juiced. You know, watching our guys perform, watching Frankie dunk it, watching Jemiah in the open floor. It's just, uh, it's exciting when we're playing that kind of basketball. Just having that composure kind of stem from knowing that you guys got to maximize your schedule moving forward to, you know, to get the tournament and maximize your resume. Is that kind of stem from that? I just think that we, it was, it was the ultimate brutal wake up call. Like to lose the way we did knowing, you know, that we felt, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we put forth a winning basketball performance, but things uh, outside of basketball prevented us from winning the game it it forced everyone to to just say like all right guys you know we're, we're not talking to officials anymore we're not talking to our opponent let's just you know talk to each other now could we be perfect in that regard the rest of the way I mean I don't know that remains to be seen but like I do know that that was a focal point of our conversations internally you know going into the USC game I saw that um, Frankie Yeah, he's just, I think, uh, at peace with himself and uh, in a really good space uh, with his confidence and his production. The more you produce and play well, you, you have more ability to lead and, and people will generally listen to you more. Uh, but I think, like, even Frankie's got, you know, he's smart about what he does. Like, he, he reacted to a call, I think, during the USC game. And then as he went towards the ref, he put a big smile on his face and started you know, communicating hours. So like just how you uh, handle those situations, I think he's got a really good feel. Um, so I, I mean, I need more of that. You know, we need more, uh, you know, internal, you know, leadership on the floor. And, and, and I think Frankie has uh, put himself in a position to have the respect of the coaching staff and, and his teammates to do that. I just try and you know communicate with him, uh, and and just encourage him to be a great leader and a point guard. And uh, I think we've we've built a very strong connection, him and I. And then uh, I just have a ton of respect for who he's become, you know, as a basketball player and, and you know who he is as a person. He's a great kid, and so I'm, you know, our relationship is very strong, and I'm hopeful that he continues to take steps and 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 want to. Be more than just someone that's out there playing basketball. Like he's he's actually trying to to run our team on the floor. He's a coach on the floor, and he and he's trying to help his teammates. Coach, obviously the premier matchup this weekend is that night in the game. Have you given any thought towards uh, that matchup this one this game? I just I our our general philosophy is is to focus on the opponent that that is right in front of us and to give that opponent our our full attention and then. You know, I mean, the guys understand that we're going to play two on the road, and 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 there's two games out there, two opportunities. But, you know, um, you know, all our energy and, and our concentration right now is with Oregon. Coach, did you see with Frankie's? I mean, to kind of piggyback off Frankie's leadership, but because you know, I know I asked you earlier in the season, I mean, Jose coming in late, kind of how to get used to the guy, having a veteran like Frankie help. Obviously, Adam being cleared and just kind of working his way in the offense. But do you feel that because of Frankie's leadership, that's why it seemed? Pretty seamless for both of those guys. Yeah, I think there's something to that, and it's just uh, you know I, t I said a lot of talked a lot about trust and kind of when we were struggling and getting on the same page and using terms like that. It's just you know those guys are all you know alpha type guys. You know, so you have like Adam, you have you know very productive players, very good careers. Jose, Frankie, it, it just takes some time for all those guys to find their place and find their voice in the leadership process. After 
the USC game, Coach, uh, Jemiah came in and said, you know, defense really is good offense. When you guys are good on defense, you guys get out in transition, and that's what you love to do. He said he doesn't want to set up in a half-court offense. But when you guys are forced to set up in a half-court offense, what are those looks that you're going for, and how do you – how are you trying to be more successful in that yeah. area? I think you're trying to just evaluate, you know, game to game, like who who is uh, who's got a hot hand, you know, who can we get the ball to that's uh, that's playing well, you know, who uh, hasn't had a shot in in a number of possessions that, you know, can we get this guy a shot and get him going? Uh, I think it's you know it's been for us, uh, you know, Frankie Jemiah kind of breaking guys down uh, off the dribble to to you know to hit the paint, make plays, you know, Adam. Coming off screens, uh, you're looking to shoot the basketball. Jose, uh, in a variety of ways to get the ball in his hands, good things have, have happened for us. Zoe, just kind of roaming and, and, and playing off all those guys. I mean, that's been like our best offensive formula lately. Coach, I'm curious. Every season, the team's different. We know that. From your perspective, what do you think has surprised you the most, whether it's good or bad, about this year's team so far? I, I mean, it's just, I think the good is that, you know, we had so many issues you know, early in the season and we, uh, you know, we had guys out unavailable. We were, we were struggling um, and, and the way the guys just didn't give in and, you know, made that commitment the last month, we've been a different basketball team. So it's, you, you, you don't want to be around or with, with people that give up or give in ever. So the fact that they approached it that way, that it meant enough for them to fight for their season the way they have the last month has been highly uh, impressive to me. Uh, and uh, I'm just hopeful that you know we keep seeing that we play the right way and are about the right things that you know we can, we're going to get good results. It seems like Alonzo Gaffney's done a better job of picking his shots. There were games before he shoot two for 12 or whatever, but it seems like he's been better about picking and choosing his spots when he's shooting. Yeah, I mean he's. I mean now he's becoming a player that that, you know. And I touched on this in, in prior you know uh, conversations with you guys about the shots he he makes key key moments. And uh, he had another couple of key baskets to kind of break the game open for us. A great touch shot in the paint, and then Frankie threw a beautiful pass that, that he he nailed the shot. So uh, we trust him. Uh, you know he's going to take uh, take certain shots. The impact of what he does is not reflected, though, in, in whether he makes shots or not. Like, he is a, a energy guy that is very unique with his length and the deflections and what he brings to our pressure on the point of the press and stuff that he does is uh, really uh, doesn't always show up in the box score. Yeah, um, I mean it's he's got his have his hands full with you know with a guy like Dante and we and he's not going to be on an island with him. We you know we have to support him you know when he's in there and uh, certainly we trust him to you know to go toe to toe with, with a guy in the post with his his physical athletic ability and uh, size. But uh, yeah, he needs the the help of his teammates and uh, you know he's he's just practicing well. You know I think. You know, he learned a hard lesson uh, in the UCLA game, and just his approach to practice has been better. He's been less demonstrative in, in how he talks in practice, and, and he's been more focused on playing basketball. So, I mean, that's been you know our our message to him. But he, yeah, I mean, I just I think over 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 time, he, he's got such a bright future that we're gonna you know continue to support him and help him get to where he needs to get eventually. Yeah, I mean, hats off. I mean, he could really shoot it. He's got great, uh, you know, I'm watching the game and I'm listening to the, to the commentators talk about him and it's, it's what I'm looking at when I watch him is, uh, is composure and poise for, you know, for a freshman guard. He really seems to, to have that, uh, that, that personality that he brings to, to the game. He doesn't seem to get rattled. You know, he could really make shots, really, really good shot maker and, uh, you know, one of the good young players in our conference. I mean. College basketball is different than, you know, when I played or, you know, some of my prior teams. It's COVID super seniors, 
mid-major guys transferring up to the power conference level. There aren't many freshmen that are having a great impact immediately as a freshman in the Pac-12 or, or a power conference. So that's a testament to how good of a player this kid is, that he's having that type of uh, success already as a freshman at Oregon. Coach, after Sean Barney's game against USC, what are your expectations for him on this road trip? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really the same. I mean, he he was what we recruited him to be. You know, he. Uh, he went after the basketball. He was relentless. Uh, he, he didn't get discouraged if he missed. He got his hands on the basketball again and went back up. And, uh, you know, he gave us a huge lift. I mean, he's, he's got to go out there and, and just outwork his opponent. And, uh, and, and if he does that, he's had some really nice games for us when, when his mind is focused on that. Sorry, what was that? Uh, what did you say? Now, you guys have had the interim AD in Arizona. Yeah, okay. Has one too. I think probably purely coincidental that the two big state schools have it, but um, does it strike you as interesting in any way? Is it something you pay attention to, or is it just like we're in season, not something? Important? I mean, I saw the report, and I just, you know, I was a little surprised at the timing of it, but I, you know, I, other than that, I just, I don't put a lot of um, stock into it. I kind of, we all went through our situation, and we're still in the midst of it. But I, yeah, outside of that, I don't really think about it too much. Coach, since uh, Thanksgiving, it's been kind of a season of runs for you guys. You guys win multiple, or you lose multiple, kind of in that stretch. You guys have your one win streak going off the UCLA or USC game. What is going to be the key to maintaining that consistency and you know not allowing one loss turn to two to three to four losses? Yeah, um, wish if I had all the answers to that question. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I kind of look at things game by game and just, you know, uh, everything I'm thinking about is, is Oregon and, and, and how, do we, how do we compete and give ourselves a chance in a very tough environment against a very good team. And when that game's over, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about the next game in Corvallis and get to that. And then after that, I'll think about the next week. And so I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's... These things run in cycles, and sometimes they're hard to predict or project. Like we've been very good at home. We, you know, we could be undefeated at home. Last year we had a hard time at home. We were very good on the road and neutrals. This year we didn't really win many neutral games so far, but we're winning at home. So I, I don't know. Coach, back in Chicago, Coach Kembro led a help lead the Ramblers team to the Sweet 16 against Illinois. Since he's joined your staff in 2021, how has he like helped guys like Frankie? get better on defense, or how has he changed your defensive schemes in general? Yeah, I think when it comes to individual players like on defense, and, and Frankie's looking at me over there right now like, hey, you better say the right thing. <laughs> um, but but he's Frankie wants to play defense, and, and he wants to guard somebody who takes pride in that under the floor. He's got great natural instincts, so I'm not, and that's why you're seeing where his steal numbers are. But in terms of over, overall defensive philosophy and concepts and teaching those concepts, and game planning for our opponent, like it's he's lights out at that end, and uh, just give him a, a, a lot of leeway uh, to to put together and develop those those game plans defensively. Our players trust, you know, what he's teaching, and and you're seeing that, uh, you know, reveal itself on the floor.